Janet and Rabia. Welcome to Avers Physics Academy. Before we start, we'd like to recommend our Avers Physics books for high school, where you can find more explanations and solve applications and the problems. In this solved official exam exercise, we are going to determine the mechanical energy of the oscillator Earth system at time zero. Determine the differential equation that governs the variation of the abscessa and then verify the solution of this equation. Calculate the values of the natural angular frequency, natural period, initial phase angle, and the amplitude. Determine the variation in the mechanical energy of the system between T0 and T1. Calculate the average value of the friction force between T0 and T1. And calculate the average power of driving the oscillations between T0 and T1. On a table, we consider a pack A of mass 200 grams fixed to one end to a massless spring of force constant 80 newtons per meter. The other end of the spring is attached to a fixed support C. Look at the figure. A slides on a horizontal rail and its center of mass G can move along a horizontal x-axis at equilibrium. G coincides with the origin O of the x-axis. At an instant t, the abscessa of G is x and its velocity is vi, where v is equal to x prime, which is equal to dx by dt. The horizontal plane containing G is taken as a gravitational potential energy reference. Let's start with the free undamped oscillations. In this part, we neglect friction and at time zero, G is which is initially at O, which means that x0 is equal to 0, is launched with a velocity v0, which is equal to v0i, with v0 having a value of 2.5 meters per second. Let's start with number 1. Determine the mechanical energy of the system A spring earth at time 0. Generally, the mechanical energy is given by this expression, kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy plus elastic potential energy. During the whole motion, G moves along the x-axis, then GPE is equal to zero, and at time zero, G coincides with the origin O of the x-axis, then the spring is not deformed, which means that EPE initially is equal to zero. So we still have the initial kinetic energy. The expression of the kinetic energy is one-half mv0 squared. The mass is equal to 200 grams, which becomes 0 0.2 kilograms, and v0 is equal to 2.5 meters per second, and the answer is 0 0.625 joules. Let's move to part two. Write the expression of the mechanical energy of the system A spring earth in terms of x, v, m, and k. As we have seen in part one, generally the mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic energy, the gravitational potential energy, and the elastic potential energy. But because G moves along the x-axis uh, axis during the whole oscillation, then GPE is always equal to zero, then we still have the kinetic energy plus the elastic potential energy. Therefore, Me is equal to one-half mv squared, which is the kinetic energy, plus one-half kx squared, which is the elastic potential energy. 3a. Derive the differential equation in X that describes the motion of G. Since the friction is negligible, or the sum of the works done by the non-conservative forces is zero, then Me is conserved. But Me is equal to Ke plus Epe, which is equal to one half mv squared plus one half kx squared. Now differentiate both sides with respect to time. Me prime equal dMe by dt is equal to zero because Me is equal to constant. The derivative of 1 half m v squared is equal to 1 half m into the derivative of v squared. And the derivative of v squared is equal to 2 v v prime. Similarly, the derivative of 1 half kx squared 
is equal to one half k times the derivative of x squared, which is equal to two x x prime. Now half times two is equal to one. Therefore, zero equal mv v prime plus k x x prime. But x prime is equal to v, and v prime is equal to x double prime. So take v as a common factor. Then v into m x double prime plus k x is equal to zero. We have two solutions v equals 0 or mx double prime plus kx is equal to 0 but v equal to 0 is rejected because if v is equal to 0 we have no motion so the acceptable solution is mx double prime plus kx is equal to 0 divide both sides by m then x double prime plus k over mx is equal to 0 which is the second order differential equation in x that describes the motion of g Let's move to part 3b, deduce the value of the natural or proper angular frequency omega 0 and that of the natural or the proper period t0 of the oscillations. This is our differential equation. This differential equation is of the form x double prime plus omega 0 squared x is equal to 0. If you compare these two equations, you will find that omega 0 squared is equal to k over m, and this is a positive constant. Now, take the square root of both sides of this equation. So we have omega 0 is equal to the square root of k over m. Now, k is equal to 80 newtons per meter, and the mass is 200 grams, which becomes 0 0.2 kilograms, and the answer is omega 0 is equal to 20 radians per second. Now let's move to the natural period. The natural period is given by this expression, 2 pi over omega 0. Omega 0 is equal to 20 radians per second. Therefore, T0 is equal to 0 0.314 seconds. Focus, please. This is important. Part 4. The solution of the previous differential equation is of the form x equal x m cosine omega 0 t plus phi. Determine the values of the constant x, m, and phi. To determine the values of these constants, we have to use the initial conditions, so that at time 0, x is equal to x of 0 equals 0, and v of 0 is equal to 2.5 meters per second. Using the solution x equal x, m cosine omega 0, t plus phi, now substitute x equals 0 and t equals 0, so 0 equal x, m cosine phi because omega 0 times 0 is equal to 0. Now we have two solutions. The first solution is xm equals 0, but physically xm cannot be 0. If xm is equal to 0, we have no oscillations. Therefore, cosine phi must be 0. Now using calculator, phi is equal to shift cosine 0. The calculator gives a value of phi which is equal to pi over 2 radians. But we have another value of phi, so that cosine phi is equal to zero. The second value of phi is equal to minus pi over two radians. Now, which value of phi is the correct? To know or to specify the correct value of phi, we have to use the second initial conditions so that v of zero is equal to 2.5 meters per second. Now, v is equal to x prime which is equal to minus xm omega 0 sine omega 0 t plus 5. Replace t equal 0 and v equal v0 equal 2.5 meters per second. So 2.5 is equal to minus xm omega 0 sine 5. 2.5 is positive. Minus xm omega 0 is negative. So sine 5 must be negative so that minus xm omega 0 sine phi is equal to positive. Sine phi is negative, therefore phi is equal to minus pi over 2 radians because plus or sine plus pi over 2 radians is equal to plus 1. Now, using equation 1, 2.5 is equal to minus xm omega 0 sine phi. Now phi is equal to minus pi over 2. Therefore, xm is equal to 0 0.125 meters. 
Let's move to the free damped oscillations. Pack A is submitted to friction force F of average magnitude F A V. Part 1. The center of mass G of pack A is shifted by X0M, which is equal to 12.5 centimeters from O, and then A is released from rest at time zero. Take into account that the initial conditions are not the same in parts capital A and capital B. Also, take into account that G is shifted by 12.5 centimeters, but we don't know whether it is shifted to the right or to the left. G passes through O for the first time at the instant 0.085 seconds with a speed of 2 meters per second. Part 1a. Determine the variation of the mechanical energy of the system A spring earth between the instants T0 and T1. Let's start with the initial mechanical energy. It is given by this expression, Ke0 plus GPE0 plus EPE0. Okay. At time 0, G is released from rest, so Ke0 is equal to 0. And during the whole oscillation, G moves along the x-axis, which, which is taken as a reference level for gravitational potential energy. So GPE is equal to 0 during the whole question. Now, at this position, we still have the elastic potential energy. So, 1 half k x 0 m squared k is equal to 80 newtons per meter and x 0 m is equal to 12.5 centimeters which is equal to 0 0.125 meters therefore the initial mechanical energy is equal to 0 0.625 joules let's move to the mechanical energy at time t1 1 g reaches O for the first time. So, we have Me at time T1 is equal to Ke plus GPE plus EPE. Again, GPE is always zero. And 1G reaches O, the spring is not deformed anymore, and then EPE is equal to zero. So, we still have only Ke. The expression of Ke is 1 half mv1 squared. The mass is equal to 0 0.2 kilograms and the speed is equal to 2 meters per second. And the answer is 0 0.4 joules. Finally, we can calculate the variation of the mechanical energy. The variation is given by this expression. The final mechanical energy minus the initial mechanical energy. This is going to be 0.4 minus 0 0.625 therefore the variation in the mechanical energy is equal to minus 0 0.225 joules 1b deduce the average value of the friction between the instance t0 and t1 using this formula delta me is equal to the sum of the works done by the non-conservative forces but the friction force is the only non-conservative force that does a work so Delta Me is equal to the work done by the friction, which is equal to minus FAV times D. But the distance traveled by G between the instance T0 and T1 is equal to X0M minus 0, equal X0M, which is equal to 0 0.125 meters. Now, replace each physical quantity by its value. Delta Me is equal to minus 0 0.225 joules, proved in the previous slide, and D is equal to 0 0.125 meters, therefore, FAV is equal to 1.18 newtons. Let's move to part 2. In order to drive the oscillations of A, an appropriate setup supplies the oscillator and average power PAV. Part 2A, what is meant by drive the oscillations? The system as provided by amounts of energy just enough to compensate for the energy decrease in order to oscillate with constant amplitude as if there were no friction. Part 2b. 
calculate the average power between the instance t0 and t1. Generally, the average power is calculated by dividing the energy over time. Then P average is equal to E driving over delta T. Delta T is the duration of driving, which is the difference between T0 and T1. But how can we find E driving? The energy supplied during the driving is just enough to compensate for the energy decrease, which means that E driving is equal to the energy lost by the system between T0 and T1. In a previous slide, we found the variation in the mechanical energy of the system between these two instants, and the energy lost by the system between these two instants is equal to the absolute value of the variation in the mechanical energy during the same time, which is equal to 0 0.225 joules. Now we are ready to calculate the average power. The driving energy is equal to 0 0.225 joules. T1 is equal to 0 0.085 seconds times 0 is equal to 0. Therefore, P average is equal to 2.65 watts. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share.